Hi, it's Alex. Today I want to talk about my experience of being a COVID long hauler. My last video, I talk about my experience with the acute phase of the illness. So I'm going to start kind of where I left off in that video. So I've mostly recovered from the worst of uh, experience of having COVID-19. And I've been reading news articles and such, and they all kind of give me this picture of like, you either die or you get better after two weeks. So that's kind of what I'm expecting. And I feel kind of not great. Um, most of my worst symptoms have gone away. Like I'm able, I'm not gasping for breath anymore. But I'm not getting better the way I do after, say, having a flu. I've had the flu a number of times, and after two weeks, I'm 100% back to normal, usually after a lot shorter of a time than that. And here I am after COVID, maybe about day 12, and I'm still hurting in my lungs. I still have pain when I breathe in. It's not anywhere near as bad, um, but it's still there. And my stamina and my ability to exercise is not really there. But it's not really all that terrible. And so I kind of go along like this, and I'm, I'm very slowly getting a little bit better from not really day to day, but like week to week. And then, a few weeks out, I start feeling much, much worse. Like, it was dramatic. And this was my first, what I would call a relapse. Now, I don't really know what it was. Was it a relapse? Was I somehow reinfected? Uh, was there something else going on in my body? Who knows? And I've researched this and there's no real consensus about what was going on. But what I know is that some of the symptoms from the acute phase came back. And I also got some new symptoms. I had loss of smell, which was sort of an unsettling symptom because of how profound it was. Like here my nose is clear, there's nothing in my nose blocking it, and suddenly I can barely smell at all. Uh, and so the, this, this relapse I had lasted about the same time as the acute phase did the first time, about 11 days, and it followed a kind of similar pattern, but it wasn't as bad. Like, my shortness of breath wasn't quite as extreme as the first time around. And at the end, as I was coming out of this, this setback, I felt worse than I did after the first round of this, and it was really frustrating. It was really like kind of demoralizing and I, I became severely depressed because I was thinking like, am I ever going to recover? How, how did I get this much worse? What is going on in my body? And I was reading articles online and there was just nothing discussing this. And the subsequent several weeks were really, really hard. I can tell you, I want to tell you how I felt on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I would wake up not knowing how I was going to feel at a given point in time. Every day was completely unique. And this is the one thing that characterizes the COVID recovery for me, is its unpredictability. Like, you get better, you get worse, and you never know when it's going to happen. Like, you might have a great day, you might feel better the next day, and even better the next day, and then the day after that, bam, you feel much worse again. And sometimes I would have a, a series of three or four days where I just decline, and I get worse, and then the next day I get even worse. And, you know, some days I would feel fine in the morning, and then bam, afternoon, I'm just zonked out. Now, w w what were the sort of symptoms for me during this slow and grueling recovery. Um, first of all, my appetite was poor. I had trouble eating. And when I would eat, especially when I would eat things that had a lot of carbs in them, I would get really short of breath afterwards. So for, for periods of several hours sometimes. So like I would eat and then I would have trouble breathing for like two hours. And um, I also would have mysteriously elevated heart rate. During the acute phase of the illness, my resting heart rate was very high. At one point it got up to 114 and it was over 100 beats per minute. This was with me lying down or sitting and doing nothing. 
And it wasn't quite that bad. It would be in the 80s or 90s, but that's still not normal. Like, to be lying down and have my heart in the 80s, like, it just, it was unsettling. And it kind of would come and go. Like, my heart rate would go up for a period of maybe about five hours, and then it would go down for a little bit. And when I would try to do exercise, like, and I'm not talking about working out, I'm talking about walking around, walking up steps, things like that, my heart rate would sometimes get scarily high. Like, at one point, I went shopping, and I carried the uh, bags of groceries back up the steps, and my heart rate went up to 150. And then I felt so wiped out that I had to lie down for two hours. Like, it was really, I, it, it was really, like, I don't know how to even describe it. It was horrible. And, like, I never knew exactly how bad it was going to be until it was happening. Like, sometimes I would be like, oh, I'm going to try to walk a half mile, and then I go out on a walk and I'm fine. And then the next day, I can't even walk across the courtyard. Like, it's just, whatever. Like, it's kind of hard for me to talk about this. So I spent probably about three months like this, kind of effectively disabled, but not not all the time. It was sort of on and off, unpredictable. And the good news is it very slowly started getting better. And somewhere along the line, I kind of noticed a lot of the symptoms really calmed down. Like my, uh, my heart rate normalized, I started feeling a normal level of appetite, and about when that happened, my shortness of breath got a lot better. I was still, though, like, my breathing was still hindered, and then I kind of moved into this new phase of the recovery where I started getting all different sorts of chest pain, and it was really painful. Uh, I would have, I would have a sharp pain on breathing in. When I was breathing in, I would be like, and then when it got to the end of the breath, there would be this piercing sharp pain just at the end of the breath. So that was one of the types of pain. Uh, another type of pain I would have is this dull ache in my chest that was just always there. Uh, another type of pain I would have is a sort of muscular pain, like pain in the muscles around my torso. I would also sometimes have like burning sensations. I would have like uh, <laughs> I, I can go on and on about all the different types of chest pain that I experienced, but just there were a lot of different types of pain, and they were very variable. One day one of them would appear, and another one would completely disappear. And it went on and on like this, just week after week of sort of rotating types of pain. And there were times it made it really hard to concentrate, there were times I was very irritable, and then there were times when I felt more or less okay, and I was able to function more normally. Also throughout all this time, I had mucus coming up, and it was very different from having a cold, even different from having bronchitis, which I've had once. It felt like it was coming from very deep down in my lungs, and it was this very slow kind of process of having it come up. There was never like a huge amount of it, but if I didn't kind of clear it by breathing, I would end up with a cough. And this is interesting, because during the acute phase of the illness, I didn't have a cough at all, but kind of later on in the recovery, I started developing this, it was not a dry cough, it was a productive cough, coughing stuff up. I don't really know what was going on, but my theory is that this is part of the, the body's healing process, maybe removing dead tissues. I want you to give you an idea of how slow this recovery was. It was not at all like a recovery from a flu, and it was probably a little bit more like recovery from mono. I had mono years ago, but it was, it was much worse than that. I would take mono any day over what I went through with COVID, um, both because it was a slower recovery than mono, and because, uh, it, like, mono was a little bit more of a straight upwards trajectory, whereas this is just, like, really up and down. Uh, I emphasized that I had that relapse. That was not the only relapse I had. It was the worst one. But maybe around the five or six month mark, I had another kind of bad relapse. I had been going on walks and able to function, and then I just got worse again. My breathing got worse. I just started feeling worse overall. And there were quite a few days around that time when I, I couldn't really go on walks anymore. And I couldn't do much of anything. I spent a lot of time resting again. 
again, it was up and down from day to day. More recently, I had another minor relapse that really just was pain. My energy level stayed high, my breathing stayed clear enough for me to function, but a lot of that pain that had cleared up previously came back. So, I've had this sort of repeated experience of relapsing. It doesn't, hasn't ended yet, and I'm almost at the 10 month mark. But the one thing that is clear, there is an upwards trajectory, especially when I look at the long term. I am getting better, and I'd say I'm mostly better now, and it feels really great. But this has been a really, really tough year for me. Um, why am I sharing this? I want people to know that this happens to some people. And I've, I've seen a little bit more discussion of it in the media, which is great, but at the time that I was going through this, I felt very alone because all the stuff I read said that you either die or you recover in two weeks, and I was just like, what's wrong with me? Um, I also felt like I was kind of gaslighted by the medical establishment, and that's something I hope to talk about in a future video. But again, this video has already gotten pretty long, so I think it's time to wrap it up. Uh, I hope I've given you somewhat of a picture of what uh, being a COVID long hauler is like. I also want to emphasize it's different for everybody. There are a lot of people who have it much worse than me, there are a lot of people who are recovering much more slowly than me, but there are also people who are COVID long haulers who have recovered much quicker than me. So it's, it's a very diverse experience, and it's important to understand that you've just heard one voice here. Don't overgeneralize too much. Yeah, that's what I have to say. I hope this has been insightful. Thank you!